Hello and welcome to Sondele Khini. I am Bongega Kumede. In today's show, Grahamstown residents protest for clean water, potholes hurt pockets and not just tires, municipality roof decay affects businesses in High Street, and Grahamstown vets partner with the SPCA to help animals in the township. The Grahamstown community, in particular its taxi industry, has called on the municipality to address the water crisis in the town. Taxi owners went on a strike last week and submitted a list of demands, among which includes that the municipality must create a solution to provide clean water to all residents. Zimke Takweza investigates the story further. South Africa is the 30th driest country in the world. Water scarcity is one of the problems that this country has to face, and the local Makana municipality is no exception. So I prefer this one, National Road, or I buy pick and I think we must to clean we speak with Tamron Fredericks, Rhodes University's environmental economic lecturer, on the many reasons for the water issues. The problem that's been a long time coming. So basically, um, it's uh, since 2010, 2013, there's been a lack of actually getting water to people. So it's mainly infrastructure problems. Um, however, <clears throat> at the moment, we are actually we're in a drought as well. So this has just compounded the problem. The taxi industry has handed the municipality a list of demands, calling for the municipality to take action. Taxi drivers have had a strike and promised to hold another massive strike should the municipality not respond to their demands. The biggest cry in this local town of Grahamstown is the water accessibility and safe drinking water. Must balance out to yes, Lela, cause the Indoya man's are your problem, young go. And the bala number is plus minus four years. It's no problem, your man's. Who's going to man's a second as a sacquas no was still a cause. I asked the Luma is a swing cause I'm tech. Never goes away and we are quasu guacha, Fneka, Ua, Wabilis, Ua big Italian Wayaga pole. O can you your tanga a man's a town? O can you your cocon in the Utroxam Tonjin? I'll pegang a support Alfred. Siamba Gabandabane transport. Problem Iba in Doba Abandabang and a transport born by a safari. Lungile Penga, a local municipality researcher, talks to us about what the municipality is doing right and what it is doing wrong. The most important positions, senior management positions, are vacant, so people have to leave their position and act temporarily and get paid for acting temporarily. So there is instability in terms of leadership, and then we have people who are working, but we don't see what they're doing, there are no results. And also in terms of them being assessed on their performance, that's something that is always is never done. It is quite evident that there's a bigger problem, a problem of service delivery. Reporting for RUTV, I am Zimkita Kweza. Grahamstown's municipality has been placed under further stress thanks to pressures of road maintenance. Potholes continue to cause significant damage to vehicles and local drivers fear the financial impact that an accident can incur. However, unlucky drivers do not need to reach into their pockets just yet. Joshua Parsons reports. Potholes are still wreaking havoc in Grahamstown. However, there is a little known policy in South Africa that allows anyone who experiences harm to their vehicle from public roads to claim monetary compensation from their municipality. Ntutu Zeli Mtlaba, Makana's road manager, told us how to go about this process. You write a letter, and then after you write a letter, and then address it to me, and then with the photos of the pothole, and also the position where the actual pothole is, 
but you must have a point of reference. Let's say at that street, at, at the certain number, we'll give the house. And then after you combine that, then you have also to go and then do the three codes at uh, maybe three manufacturing tires around Grimstown. You have to submit it to me. And then after that, I will write a letter to the director and then the director approves it. And then when he approves it, uh, and then I will take it to the insurance, to the finance, and then they will compensate you. Elan Ben David is a Grahamstown local who hit a pothole in October last year. He received compensation from the municipality through his insurance broker. Uh, so, so I got a phone call maybe a month and a half, two months after the accident from the legal department at Outsurance saying that um, in, a, in a case like this where there could be negligence due to the municipality, like in the case of a pothole, I do have the right to claim back from the municipality, but they said they will process like the legal work rather than me doing it. So um, I had to send them uh, a location, Google Maps photos, photos of the road, photos of the intersection, the potholes, nearby signposts. They asked me like, was it clearly uh, was it clearly marked that there are potholes, like how long have the potholes been there for, have they been fixed? Um, so once I'd sent them all of that, I got an email back from the legal department saying thank you, they're going to contact the municipality. From what Elan has said, we can see that the process of getting compensation from damage is a lengthy process, but if seen through to the end, it does pay off. However, this has reached a catch-22 between the municipality needing to fix potholes and compensating people for damage. It's affecting us very bad because actually if we would uh, repair our potholes and then we wouldn't have any problem, let's say, to, to pay the money, let's say, for the, um, for the damages of tires and also for the damages of cars. Because remember that if you damage only, it's not, the damage doesn't only go to the tire. Maybe it's, it's the tire and the man. So we have to compensate for both of them. And usually some other bags, you cannot get them. And then you usually have to pay them for the whole set, for the four bags. So it's costing us a lot. Providing compensation is an important policy. However, with up to 15 claims per month, it is hitting the municipality's finances hard. Fixing Grahamstown's roads will therefore need a huge cash injection, which may occur in the next financial year. Joshua Parsons, reporting for Sondele Echini, Grahamstown. Potholes are not the only worry for Makana's infrastructure department. The roof of the department recently collapsed, further lengthening the list of required repairs in town. Local businesses are upset with the municipalities in action and have taken it upon themselves to address the town's declining infrastructure. This is RUTV here on High Street, trying to figure out how the negligence of the municipality has negatively affected the business on High Street. The roof of the Makana Infrastructure Department has collapsed on High Street. However, there have been no efforts to fix nor amend the roof. We spoke to Mr. Mtutuzeli Mklaba about the damage. Yeah, for me, if I can tell you, it's, that, uh, it's a deteriorating state of the roof because what is happening in this building, though, in the 1950s, it's all actually for the past years they were not maintained and then we but the problem is when you fix the roof first you must start uh, the building you must start with the roof and then we we are planning to to fix it within the process of uh, the next uh, the opening of the new financial year which is starting on july because now in the present moment we wanted to allocate some other departments from the department that municipality was uh, was doing the rentals on it, and then now for this coming year, and then we'll be doing this building, initially this one. However, the continued lack of care on High Street has affected local-owned businesses, such as Videotronic and Night Shoes. Infrastructure actually affects us con confidence because people don't invest in town. They don't come come to town, bed and breakfast. Don't buy new TVs. They don't. They don't um, in add to, to the services um, which affect our, our, our business. Look, with the lack, lack of uh, infrastructure, remembering that private businesses like us, we actually invest everything in town, so we actually 
our whole investment is in a business, in, in, in the buildings that we actually own. And if that crumbles, that's, that's us. You know, our investment is, is actually not a very good investment at the end of the day. Other businesses, such as Nice Shoes, have also been seeing how their tax money has not really fixed the town. So as a business, we're a close corporation, so we pay a lot of taxes and the rates and um, monthly uh, accounts with uh, Makana municipality and we don't know where the money goes. Apparently they have a lot of uh, big wage bill, but what, what we've done is, as a residence association, we've done um, fundraising amongst businesses to actually fix the roads ourselves, like we've got a, a jet patcher machine. To, to fix the potholes um, on our own expense on a, as, a, as a group. Through our investigations, we have found how the municipality is still failing the business sector of the town. This is Deepika Naidu for RUTV High Street, Gramstown. In lighter news, Gramstown's SPCA has teamed up with the Ikala Vet Clinic and the CCS to provide free basic healthcare services to animals in disadvantaged areas. This is in response to a recent outbreak of the distemper virus. The SPCA hopes that this health care and increased education on animal health will solve this issue. Gramstown's SPCA, in partnership with Ikala Vet Clinic, have come up with a community service initiative. They offer free medical care, such as vaccinations, to animals in disadvantaged areas. SPCA manager Mark Thomas explains. This came about through a joint uh, discussion that uh, I initiated with the CCS and also with the Carla Veterinary Practice. Uh, the SPCA is very passionate about helping the community and doing as much as we can to support all the animals that need our care. To give you a rough idea how big the community is, we estimate there are about 91,000 properties in the community. And this spans not only just the Grahamstown area, but as I said, outreaching communities as well. Dr. Luca Mendez from Ikala Vet Clinic states that some pet owners lack knowledge and education when it comes to animal care. They often self-diagnose their pets incorrectly. You get a lot of people claiming that they've got dogs with rabies, whereas in actual fact it's a dog with mange. It's quite a common complaint. Another big challenge is um, getting people to actually vaccinate their dogs. Vaccination for rabies and distemper virus, for example, is quite critical. And at the moment, there's an outbreak of distemper. It takes a lot of manpower, it takes a lot of people to actually get the messages through. And that is definitely one of our biggest challenges. This is where the SPCA really um, helps us. They essentially organize the people because they've got a much stronger network within the townships. Um, they organize the location and then we set up a little base and hopefully people come. They usually do. And yeah, much of that is down to the SPCA. Mark states that they are well received in the communities they visit. The community like us coming out there. Uh, they like to be able to talk to us and they like the fact that we have a very engaging team. I'm very lucky that the staff I have who work with me and are dedicated to this role um, can speak between them about seven or eight different African languages. So we can bridge huge gaps, uh, not only through the education, but through communication with them. And it's important to understand what they perceive as their issues. It's very easy for us to sit here and say, this is what we think they need. But without actually going out there, you never really know. Despite the challenges they face, nothing makes Mark and Dr. Mendes happier than making a difference in Gramstown's poorer communities this is Little Dida reporting for RU TV. From hard news to sports, we have you covered. Now over to Joshua Parsons for the sports update. This is Joshua Parsons with your sports highlights for the past week. Egyptian breaks English football record. Hamilton back to winning ways in Spain. Protea women earn series win. And Rhodes women come home with silverware. Egyptian international footballer and Liverpool forward Mohamed Salah set the English Premier League record for most goals scored in a season. Salah netted 32 times in 38 games and was awarded with the Golden Boots Award on Saturday at Anfield. Mercedes Formula One driver Lewis Hamilton topped the podium on Sunday at the Spanish Grand Prix. 
He now has a 17-point lead in the Drivers' Championship over Ferrari's Sebastian Vettel, who only managed fourth. Formula 1 next heads to Monaco on Sunday the 27th of May. On Monday, in Bloemfontein, the South African women cricket side cruised to a six-wicket victory. The Protea, the Protea has won the fifth and final ODI of Bangladesh's tour to South Africa. This has seen the Proteas complete a 5-0 whitewash over the visitors. The Rhodes women rugby side has returned from the University Sports South Africa Sevens tournament with silverware. Stuart Wilson reports. The Rhodes women's rugby team travelled to Johannesburg this weekend where they competed in the University Sports South Africa tournament at Fitz University. Despite this being only their second appearance at the tournament, the team managed to win the Shield Cup and finish in fourth place overall. They were rougher than we thought, they were harder than we thought, they were faster than we thought, but we played our hearts out and we won the shield, I guess, yeah. It brought the team together because at the end of the day we were pushing each other, we were shouting at each other, we were cheering for each other on the sidelines with broken limbs and hurt eyes and whatever. We were, it brought us together and it was, good. It was a good experience. The girls made their national debut at the USA tournament last year where they finished 8th place. Ever since then they've been working hard to improve that position. Our team was brand new last year so we found out that we're going to USA 30 days before and that's when we really started practicing hard and as, as great as our team was from last year we, we had so much better pre preparation for the tournament this year. I, th I think that's one of the other things why I'm so proud of the girls. Um, obviously it was for some of our goals they were it was really their first time for the others. They were part of the debut team last year. And seeing them from the girls that played last year and where they are now, it's a huge improvement. I mean, some of these girls look like they've been playing rugby from school days. Um, so, yeah, no, vast improvement. But with their dedication and commitment, I mean, I can just, yeah, I can actually just foresee very good things for females rugby in, in roads. The team's spirits are high after their performance this weekend, and they look forward to their next tournament in September. We are now joined in studio by Karaba Mavusa, who is chairperson of the Rhodes University Soccer Club, and Pam, who is captain of the Rhodes University women's rugby team. We will be discussing women in sport. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. So ladies, we don't have a lot of time, so let's just jump straight into this discussion. Um, as, a leader in, as a woman and a leader in sport, do you ever feel like you're being undermined or marginalized um, in your sport? Uh, let's start with you, Karaba. Definitely. I, I think every woman in my position, I think even Pam, will agree with me that we do feel marginalized, especially if it's a male-dominated sport. You find yourself in a position where no matter who you are, for example, I'm, like you said, I'm chairperson, and someone will be media rep or a secretary, but if they're a male, I'm a female, if they say something, they're more likely to be listened to than I am. So. Being marginalized as a woman in general is something that happens every single day, everywhere, in sports, in, in academia, everywhere. Thanks, thanks, Karabo. And, and what do you think has contributed to that? I mean, if you look at the media and we look at sports in the media, um, it's, it's mostly males that are represented. I mean, if you turn on the television now, you probably, and you go to the sports channel, you're probably most likely gonna see males. Um, how how do we how do we like how do we get women into the media and into sport more in, into the public's eye to change that kind of view? Where do you think it starts? I think um, the general public undermines the abilities of women. So especially in like a male dominated sport as rugby, you tell people that you play rugby as a female, they question if it's touch or if it's weekend or whatever, and they don't really get that you can be a professional and be able to tackle and take tackles and do all of that. I think also the fact that, example, in the Olympics, the netball te the reason why the netball is not in the Olympics is because there's no male counterpart of the sport. Mm -hmm. It's kind of ridiculous. But it's because everyone thinks that if you watch, I don't know, female, I don't know, basketball, they're going to be throwing like a girl or whatever. I don't know. That, that I don't, it's, it's, it's a societal kind of thinking. And yeah. Just to quickly add on to what Pam said, media for me is the, it plays the biggest role in how women are portrayed because if you see even on 
you know, the big shows like SABC, okay. what's shown on there is Ibafana Bafana, you'll never see Banyana Banyana. Um, even, even if, let's say, for example, here at Rhodes, the women won the Foster Shield Sevens. Cup, yeah. They won the whole cup and nothing was done for them. Preparation, you know, like, hashtag back your girlies, none of that was done. But because the men, and it's a, like a male-dominated sport, everything was, you know, thrown that way. We had to pay all of our attention to them. So media definitely is, you know, the biggest yeah. role player in, in the way women are treated. Thanks. And, and in terms of funding, um, if you look at the top 100 earners in, of sports people, there's only one woman on that list. Um, Cristiano Ronaldo tops it, and Serena, Serena Williams lies somewhere in there, and she, she's the only woman on the top 100 earners. And in terms of funding, I mean, you see in the FIFA World Cup, the males earn five times what the men earn. Um, if you look at the USA, women, um, they won the World Cup, and the males who only who got knocked out in about the fourth round, or it was somewhere around that, they got knocked out quite early in, in the competition. They get paid more than the women, and the women won it. Um, do you experience similar things at, at the university and, and with the kind of funding you get at, at Rhodes in, in your sport? Uh, let's go. We go. definitely do as the females. Right now we're having a problem with the kit. Somehow when the men have our kit, it gets lost. And then when the kit is replaced, we get the old kit that they took from us and they get the new one. So funding is definitely a problem. And also with the little things like the balls, how do you play football without a ball? You, you'll see us struggling to find a ball, asking people, yo, do you have a ball for us? Oh, no, sorry, we don't. Like, funding goes a long way, and there's a reason why male sports are so big. It's because of funding. People invest in that. But when it comes to females, it's like, but they're not really that good, so let's just, you know, give them the small amounts. And see how they do. And and for yourself, Pam, obviously with the rugby and the and the varsity shield, the men got given a lot of attention, mm-hmm. and their results weren't weren't uh, really reflective of mm-hmm. of that. And obviously, the women have now done very well. And have you have you seen a, a shift in the way the university has approached um, women in well the 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 women's rugby side? For like a minute, <laughs> when we came back from you said it was like ah female rugby great great, and then people forgot again. Because, I mean, even this Saturday, we're having a match against three teams from Busu and uh, UFH, and no one knows about that. <laughs> it's, it's a shock to people when I tell them about it. So, it's even, it's hard, it's hard getting anything. As she was talking about the kits, we struggled finding um, togs last year, soccer boots. We, we got them the day before we, we were going to play the to- tournament at UCES last year in September. So, it's, no one really cares about female sport. No one really is looking out to assist female sport. So, yeah. Okay, ladies, and... And in terms, so we're gonna have to start finishing off off now with the with the discussion. So, a, a closing question: How do we get people to start paying attention to to female sports, and how do we get people at Rhodes University and students at Rhodes University to come and start supporting, and and even in South Africa, to come and start supporting our our our, our female team? So, who are clearly doing better than our male male teams? How, how do we how do we get that to ha- get that to happen? I think it's not our responsibility as females to get people to support us. It's the responsibility of um, the organizers or whoever is above the team. Rhodes University should invest in um, the women's rugby team as much as they do in the men's rugby team because they should have the same sponsors. They should be getting the same equal treatment at the end of the day because, as you can see, the results aren't the same. And if we're basing everything on results, the women should be getting everything. So it's not our responsibility to get people to come and watch us. It's each individual's responsibility and the people who are above us. It's their responsibility to you know, bring in the people. I also think media, marketing. So we need to market female sport as much as we do with the male sport. We need to back our girls' keys, as you, uh, girls as you said, girlies. And uh, we need to advertise advertise as much as we do for the boys mm. we must do it the exact same even at the university for the girls so that's my thing thanks for joining us today ladies unfortunately that's all we have time for today um back to you bongeka thank you for watching sondele see you next time